Hey everyone, welcome to day four of Breakthrough Week. Today is going to be so good. We're talking um, about some inspiration from one of my favorite speakers, Carla Harris. I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of Carla Harris. Um, tell me if you're here, say hello. That way I know that uh, y'all are joining. And um, tell me, like, again, I would love to hear any wins that you're having. So just drop them in the comments. Just say, hey, tell me maybe how this is helping making you feel this week. Any wins that you've been having? I just love to hear it because today we're going to talk about managing up. Um, and most specifically, we're going to be talking about um, one of my favorite, most inspirational active leaders in the workplace today. And that is Carla Harris. Carla Harris um, is a senior vice president at Morgan Stanley, and she is so motivating to listen to. Hey, Sarah, happy Thursday. It's almost Friday. Okay, so here's what I want to know. How many of you, um, hey, Karen, have taken an exercise class? We've got Sarah and Karen and Helen. How many of you have taken an exercise class? And if you have taken an exercise class, how did you choose which exercise class you were going to take, right? Because, um, hello, hello, hello. Yay, Carrie, I'm so glad this has been energizing this week. I've been energized. I, I was telling somebody else, like, I was so excited for this week that I kind of wanted to be a participant. Instead <laughs> the one leading it, so I was so excited. Okay, how many of you have ever taken an exercise class? And then tell me in the chat, how do you, yes, okay, so Karen, Peloton, how do you choose which class you take? How do you choose? I would be curious of how many of you have chosen the class, not just based on like what they've taught in the class, but how many of you choose the class based on the instructor? How many of you choose the class based on the instructor alone? How many of you have gone back to take a continuing education class and you choose that class based on the instructor, right? I used to teach at the University of Nebraska. And okay, so Sarah, you do what's best with your schedule, cycling class, because I like it. Um, how many of you go a step deeper though and you look who the instructor is? Energy of the person teaching it, right? You might be like thinking to yourself, so like if I'm looking through the Peloton list, like I know what I'm gonna get. Like if I want a dose punch of energy, it's a Robin Arzon class. If I want something funny, it's a Cody Rigsby class. If I want something more like inspirational life coachy, it's an Allie Love class, okay? So yeah, Karen says all the time, the instructor, what I wanna focus on that day. I used to teach at the University of Nebraska and you get a reputation. When they see your name behind Management 3490, Right, because you know, Management 3490. There was four instructors that taught Management 3490, which was Essentials of Management. Um, and but people would look for my name, and perhaps even look for another professor's name. How many of you have um, not taken a course or have been told not to take a course because of the person's name? And so you go and you look through the list, and you're like, oh, if I see that name, it's 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 a it's a hard pass for me, right? Or as Randy Jackson would say in American Idol, it's a no for me, dog, right? So you guys start to notice, right, that you start to take classes because of a certain instructor, because you um, sign up for courses because there's a certain instructor. Um, yeah, Karen is great at 5.45 a.m., but she doesn't have the energy I needed at 9 a.m., right? You take it based on what you know you're going to get from the instructor. There's a million HGTV shows, right? And they all have the same basic premise. Have you noticed that? That all HGTV shows have a transformational element. There's a before, there's a during, and an after. And we choose what we wanna watch on HGTV because of what we know we're going to get. If we wanna just have this like warm, fuzzy, feel good, we're gonna watch Chip and Joanna. If we want some more like hard charging, a little bit more drama, we might watch Love It or List It, okay? Because the energy is different. And so what's my point in all of this? My point is that you are always teaching people how to think about you. You are always teaching people how to interact with you. You are always teaching people what to expect from you. 
So you are your own brand, right? You are choosing things because you know what to expect from that person, just like you are always teaching people. I, I used to, to say this all the time when I talk about setting boundaries and then change management. You're always teaching people how to use you. And when I say use, I don't mean use and abuse. When I mean use, how to pick you for things, how to think about you at work. And that's why this managing up concept is so important and why I love Carla Harris because I, I went to a women's leadership conference one year and I was super excited because the keynote speaker was Amy Cuddy, okay? But I was blown away when Carla got on stage that I, I she was my favorite speaker of the conference. I went and bought her book. And one of the things that she said was that all major decisions about your career are going to be made when you are not in the room. So decisions about your compensation, decisions about promoting you, decisions about your future, decisions about um, you know, your team or who you might work with are all made when you are not in the room. Have you guys noticed that? Like what that for me was like a moment. And so that's why it's so important to think about what perceptions you're giving off, right? And so she gives the advice that we should think of three adjectives on how we want people to perceive us and then think about what behaviors are constantly aligning to help always give off and create that impression. Because all these decisions are going to be made when you are not in the room. And so when I go back to day one and I think about, um, you know, it's not just enough to belong in the rooms where decisions are made, but we have to make impact in the rooms where decisions are made. Here's the thing. You need to learn how to make impact when you're in the room and you need to learn how to make impact when you are not in the room. Does that make sense? So if you had to think about, um, it's a wonderful quote and terrifying for control freaks. <laughs> Amen, Sarah. That is the mic drop of the day. You are so correct. It's terrifying. And I want to give you some tools today, Sarah so that you can start thinking about how can you manage up? How can you manage the impressions? Because I believe at the end of the day that success loves clarity. And people are horrible guessers. So the more clear you can be, the more consistent you be, you can be about the uh, perception that you wanna give off about, you know, when people are looking at a list and they come across Sarah, and I don't know if I can say your last name, uh, Sat Satanian, Sarah Satanian. Like I, what are the three things, what are the three words that come to mind? So I would love for you to put in the comments, what are three words that you want people to think about when they see your name? So when they see Melinda, Sarah, Carrie, Alora, Karen, um, I, mean, I hope I get you all here, Helen, right? What, what three words, type it in the chat. Do you want to come to mind? So this is a little bit different than what I asked you the other day. The other ask, day I asked you how, how you want to feel, right? And how you want the audience to feel when you're advocating. I'm asking you today, what are three words that you want people to think when they see your name on the list? Anyone know of companies that do bring someone to the room for those conversations? That would be fascinating. Why, why is that? Say more about that, Melinda. Um, oh, you mean when they're making hiring decisions? Got it. Okay. So are you talking about like, so for instance, if I go in for a job interview, right? And I do all the interviewing, there's probably going to be a committee that meets after the fact that decides who gets the job, right? Or for a promotion. Or if like, you know, you're, um, you know, if they're looking at raises or title changes or whatever that is, right? Lots of times it's a committee or an HR group that's meeting and talking about people when you're not in the room. These are great, competent, approachable, helpful, persistent, hardworking fighter, awesome. So I want you to start thinking about what are the activities that you're consistently doing day in and day out that are teaching people what, how to expect that from you. So I wanna talk a little bit more about managing up. So there was this time at work when um, I, I was really passionate about a project. And it was in 2008, it was right after the banking collapse, and um, we had to do some major change management at work. And I, I had contributed some information, but when they chose the final committee to basically um, you know, bring everything together, that these people were gonna go um, visit all of our locations, 
I was not on the list and I was pissed. And I went to go talk to my manager about it. And one of the things that she said, she goes, well, we appreciated your efforts. I guess I just didn't realize that you were passionate about leading this going forward. And what that taught me was that people are horrible guessers. And I think sometimes we move through the workplace thinking that like we give cues or clues or all these sorts of things and that people will just kind of take the hint. But what I want you to know is that not everyone is good at reading people and people don't get it. And so if you've ever worked with me one-on-one -on -one, and when my clients work with me one-on-one -on -one, and we talk about things that they want, like I wish my manager would do this. I wish I would have gotten picked for that. I want a promotion. My goal is to be a chief marketing officer, whatever that is. I ask them, I say, that sounds amazing. And have you told your leader about that specifically? Have you been very specific and clear about that? And lots of times you can probably guess the answer is no, I have not. I have not been ex explicitly clear about that. And I think there's lots of reasons why we don't get clear about that because it feels risky, right? Yes, Alora, you can't leave anything to interpretation. It feels risky. It feels vulnerable to say, you know, I want to be considered for this because you know, what if you get re rejected? You know, what if your leader says no? What if they don't agree that that's the case, you know? And so there's a lot of vulnerability in that. Um, but one of the things that I want you to think about is success loves clarity and you are always in the driver's seat in your career. I just want to give you some of the examples. So I was put on that project and I loved, loved, loved working on change management projects. So one of the things that I made sure of in my career was that I articulated at every point I could that I love working on change management projects. And when I got involved in things, I always made sure that I was consistent in my efforts to be seen as someone who handled change well, because they're not gonna pick me to lead a change project if I don't handle change well. So when change happened, how do I handle change well so that people are thinking of me as a change management leader and expert? And as I continue to move throughout my career, guess what? I always got picked to lead change management projects because that just got to be part of my brand. They'd see the name Kelly Thompson and they'd say, yep, we need her because she's an expert at leading change. I was always thinking about how do I make that consistent? One of the things that I used to do too is I always used to make sure, like when I'm thinking about leading up, is I always made sure that I was driving the conversation with my boss in my one-on-one -on -one meetings. And if I wasn't having one-on-ones, how many of you have one-on-ones with your bosses on a regular basis? Tell me in the chat. These words are amazing as I'm going through and reading these. How many of you have one-on-ones on a regular basis? Um, yeah, Melinda, compensation decisions. Um, I have a whole other... Uh, probably webinar or you and I could probably talk for an entire day on my philosophy around organizational compensation. And if you guys don't follow me on LinkedIn yet, um, I actually have put this in the group last week, but I posted it on LinkedIn today. I posted a video. I'm just um, Kelly Thompson on LinkedIn. Um, I posted a video about how I wrote the Nebraska state legislature um, to remove salary requirements to um, make compensation not such a basis for offering. So you're supposed to every week you do. Yes. Bi-weekly. Okay. Awesome. So do you, who drives that conversation? Do you drive that conversation? Do you send the meeting agenda in advance to your boss or do you just show up to that meeting? Just hoping that you're going to get to the topics that you want to cover. Because one of the things that I would encourage you to do if, um, okay, Laura, I want to talk about that. He always puts it off. One of the things that I want to talk about is that take ownership of those meetings. When I was the overseeing HR, I was really unhappy with how my one-on-ones were going with my boss. And he was the CEO of the company. I was like, this guy should have things figured out, right? Um, but we're all human. Like I said yesterday, not, not everybody's perfect. And so one of the things I realized was I went back and I said, what do I need from these meetings? And when I thought about it, I said, I need more clarity and I need more decisions made in the meetings. So I went to my boss and I said, I would like to make better use of our one-on-one -on -one time so that we can come out with decisions made versus so much time ramping you up on issues. So I said, would it be helpful if I sent you a meeting agenda 
24 hours in advance so that when we get to the meeting, we can just get to the decision. And he's like, oh my God, that would be great. Come to find out he's an introvert. I'm an introvert. And just giving that meeting agenda in advance gave us both time to think and process. And so when I got to the meeting, I was managing up better because I was driving the conversation. I was driving the agenda. Of course, he would bring his things, but I didn't just kind of go there and hope. And so, Laura, I'm wondering if one of the things that um, you could maybe think about is sending the agenda. And if it does get put off, just being, you know, a little bit more clear to say, you know, there's a decision I'm looking for and I would love to talk to you about this. How can we make sure that this gets on the agenda or, you know, on our calendars for this week? Um, yeah. So Andrea, I totally feel, yeah, I, that's exactly how mine were. Like you have them, but they were just like so draining and it's like day to day. And so I put those long-term vision things on the combo. And so when I think about your um, workbook and the risks you want to take, even just talking about long-term vision can feel risky, right? Because I was always thinking, well, what if, what if they think my vision's crazy? Like, what if they don't agree with this? Um, you know, so bringing that formal agenda can be really helpful. I always used to tell my team that they had to send their meeting agendas to me before our one-on-one. -on -one because they were in the driver's seat of their career. And one of the biggest mistakes that they could make is to rely on me to drive their career. That's like codependency, right? You are in the driver's seat, you control the agenda, you control the narrative. And one of the ways that you can make sure that you're managing up well is by managing perceptions. If you wanna be seen as somebody who is good at managing a budget, what are you doing consistently day in and day conversations to, um, you know, create this, this forum or discussion for visionary thinking. I had a client once who, um, she was a business analyst and she really wanted to get into more like organizational culture, HR-ish sort of things. And so I said, well, you can, you know, hope that they figure that out about you or what can you do to drive the conversation with your leader? Have you been ex explicitly clear that this is what you want? She's like, no. So we had to talk about all the reasons why that felt scary. But we just talked about, you know what? Success loves clarity. People are horrible guessers. And they're not just going to guess that that's what you want for your career unless you explicitly tell them. And so she had this conversation with her boss. This is what I want. This is what I'm working towards creating. I love my job as it is. And I want to talk to you about ways that I can get involved in some broader cultural initiatives. And her boss was totally supportive of this, of course, because she's an awesome employee. They don't want to lose her. Um, so today, I want to talk a little bit more about the challenge, because I think that this topic of managing up is really important when we think about driving career conversations and thinking about you know, the consistency in which we show up. And you guys all gave me your, your three words. So I would think about what risks are you willing to take to help make that your brand? What risks are you willing to take? And you can drop them in the chat if you want to help make sure that people are having that conversation about you. One of the things that um, I always tell um you know, my clients, my groups, is that consistency isn't sexy, but it sure does work. And that consistency over time, showing up in the way that you want people to perceive you and making sure you're volunteering for those types of projects and you're speaking up about these sort of things and, you know, you're um, showing up consistently in that way helps control the narrative so that when people are behind closed doors, you are the first person they think of when they think of a change management project, a visionary project, a budget project, a leadership project, a employee satisfaction project, right? Whatever your passion is. So that's, that's my challenge for you all today is to really think about, and I'm looking through my notes to make sure that I covered everything that I want to talk about. Um, I want you to think about 
how will they always choose you for the things that you want to be chosen for? So your challenge today is, and you guys can tell me what comes up for you on this, is take everything we've learned this week. Okay, so day one was all about what do you know for sure about yourself, right? Like really trusting, what do I know for sure? I am a woman who. Thinking about the three values. So when you advocate, how do you want to show up? How do you want to show up when you advocate? What is your high value thought? And I read all of your high value thoughts yesterday. They're so good. So if you need even some inspiration for some high value thoughts or some confidence mantras you can practice, I want you to read through the chat yesterday. And then really think about what's a risk I'm willing to take? Am I willing to take the risk that I want to share with my boss that I basically want her job someday or his job someday? You know how that might feel? Am I willing to take the risk to raise my hand to volunteer for a project so I can get more visible so people see me as this person? What risk am I willing to take? And your challenge today, it's a big one, but I promise you the prize is going to be worth it, is I want you to take action on this thing. So what is it, your challenge? What is it that you are going to do? What's an email you are going to write? I want you to actually take action on this thing that you want so you can create your breakthrough. Maybe you're going to send an email to your boss about talking about your salary. Some of you have some salary stuff on here. Um, Alora, it could be sending the email to your boss to say, you know, I value consistent one-on-ones because I believe that this, that, and the, the other thing. It could be sending an email saying, I want to volunteer for this committee or this resource group because of this. Some of you told me yesterday, you want to start a women's resource group at your organization. Maybe it's sending the email or reaching out to someone to say, I want to start this. And I think that this would be good because so today your challenge is all about taking action. And I know this is scary, but I promise you again, that the prize, the prize will be worth it. So I want to hear what questions you all have for me because managing up, this is a tough one. I know sometimes um, I, in fact, one of my clients yesterday, uh, we were talking about what do you do when you just have a really difficult boss and how do you manage up with a difficult boss? And I'm, I'm watching the chat if you guys have questions specifically about managing up. And I think when I think about the most difficult person I've ever worked for, I'll, I will tell you, it never got perfect. Um, I had some other choices I had to make. But one of the things that helped us most was to really sit down and get clear. Like I had to ask her and get really clear to say, what do you expect from me? What can I do? And what can I tell you? What can I communicate with you to help you better understand what I'm working on? Um, to help you, you know, to help us better work together. Um, getting really clear on goals, because one of the things I think about is ambiguity, like not knowing and kind of avoiding the conversation because you're scared of conflict. Just all that ambiguity, it actually creates more animosity. If you get to notice that, sometimes I hope that like if I just ignore things long enough, they'll go away. But what I found is like not addressing the topic like head on really just creates all that ambiguity just creates animosity. So, um, Karen, you're going to build a relationship with a champion at work. Scary. Ooh, we'll talk about that. I want to hear more about that. Um, you reached out to your HR department this morning about starting a women's resource program. Yes, you did, girl. Way to go. Rachel, how do you ask someone you don't know very well but admire professionally to be a mentor? Ooh, so for today, Rachel, in your follow-up email today, I have some starter scripts for asking. And I'm glad that you asked because one of the things I'm actually going to talk with you guys tomorrow is my Clarity and Confidence Leadership Masterclass. And one of the things about that is you get um, a bonus masterclass that's all about asking. And it has like 10 scripts just for asking that you can edit and uh, make your own so Rachel, how do you ask someone you don't know very well? Uh, look for my recap email today. I'm going to give you three starters and maybe one of these will help you. Like, so for instance, one of them is, um, I see an opportunity to blank, you know, and I think that you and I could have, I'm just changing some of the language. I think that you and I, um, could really mutually help each other because of blank. 
And so I think mentorship too, right, is not just about what can they give you, but I think it's also, Rachel, about, um, you know, what can I offer this person? And Bridget, you say that clear is kind from Brene Brown. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that is so true. And I, that's why, like, I love the, the quote that I use all the time. In fact, you can't, yeah, you can see it. I'm reverse on my board. You can't see it up there, but I have the phrase success loves clarity. Carrie, you're going to ask for a training opportunity that you want. You're going to take a new approach to a difficult relationship. Awesome. Awesome. I have a couple script starters in here for you all that you can copy, paste, tweak. I think that you'll like it. These are all awesome. All right. So your challenge today will be to do a thing. Some of you are already started. You're asking for a training. Um, you're going to ask for a mentor. You're going to reach out to your HR department. You're going to build a relationship with a new champion at work. You know, remember, guys, these people are all human. And I know sometimes this feels scary. And remember, too, being on the receiving end of some of this. Remember how it feels to have somebody reach out to you. And you're like, oh, I feel so flattered that you thought of me. Or you know what? This relationship is difficult. And I'm so glad they're reaching out. Think of the example I shared yesterday with the individual who shared how she kind of over advocated and then reached out and apologized. The email that she got back was just, was so flattering. And this person, you know, said, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you, you reached out to me. You are spectacular, <laughs> right? She got a huge compliment from this. So I know this feels scary and also know that uh, one of the other things that Carla talks about in her book, Strat it's called Strategize to Win is relationship currency. All of these efforts, all of this consistent building, all of these reach outs build relationship currency. And just like the stock market, the more deposits you put in to this building of the relationship and the relationship currency, you start to get, you know, continuous building over time, reinvestments, growth, right? It's all about relationship currency. So let's draw the winner. Um, the scripts will be in your follow-up email and I'll even talk about more about that bonus masterclass tomorrow. And, um, your challenge today is to do a thing and then you're going to post about it. So, okay. All right. So we've got this and today's winner is going to get this card deck and I love it. It's a great, even like little journaling prompt card deck, super motivating. I give it to actually a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients. It's called the empowering questions card deck. And you can draw little cards every day that just kind of like um, are super motivating to help you think about like showing up as your best self. So how have I become me? What am I like? Um, you know, what things do I love? What is my life like when it's in balance? You know, what's a bigger thing that I'm a part of? Um, so many just awesome, empowering questions. And Alora Valadez, you are going to get this. So you need to... Um, PM me your address so I can send one of my favorite little tools to you. So I hope you enjoy this deck as much as I do because they just kind of give me just a dose of quick delight. So thank you all for being live today. I hope you join me tomorrow because we are going to talk about how to elevate women as a whole in the workplace. I actually shared an article today on the reminder about it. Um, and I just have some amazing stats to share. And I think it's going to be super inspiring, especially for those of you who are looking to make more of this impact at work. So I hope you have an awesome Thursday. Alora, send me a message. Um, I'll get all the homework sent to you and the starter scripts. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a happy Thursday.